Have you ever noticed how photographs just sometimes do not do justice to the beauty you are observing? For example, a full moon night. The moon looks so big and so beautiful. You are in absolute awe. You reach out to your phone, try to take a photo, but the moon then appears like a small white circle. Well, I have noticed that a lot in photographs. I feel they do not always do the best job at conveying the true beauty that I am looking at. And I have done a lot of photography, especially with wildlife photography, where photographs were amazing to show people what little creatures, all the birds and the bugs I'm looking at. It was a really good way to share the uniqueness that I would see around me. However, I think it really was not good when it came to expressing the innate beauty I was looking at. And that is why I gravitated towards painting and I continue to paint. Ironically, most of my paintings are based on photographs. I use a lot of reference photos as many artists do and because they work to teach you how to paint and to try to see how well you're doing however however i think i might lose some of this uniqueness i'm trying to bring to my art when i use photographs one way to get over that is to paint outside take real inspiration from outside and that is what i did last month i went out with a friend we went to the park we looked at the sunset it was amazing however i decided to start painting after the sunset and it was mid february here in zurich it was so cold the paint did not dry that well on the paper it was just getting messy my hands were cold my face was cold my butt was cold we were getting slowly splashed by the water uh, so it was really hard to capture the beauty, but I could still feel that I should capture something. So I decided to just really quickly make a sketch of the overall composition and try to sketch out a few characteristic things that I could see, such as these rocks that I was sitting on. And I decided to bring th these memories back along with a basic composition and let the watercolor fill in the gaps. Well, that was last month and I'm here now this month and I ended up procrastinating on this uh, little exercise a little, uh, for, for a while. However, I've got to it now with very little vivid memories of what that scene looked like. I still feel the mood. I remember what it felt like being there, but I really don't remember a lot of the visuals. So now it's going to be this sketch. <laughs> my, and then I'm going to use both my imagination and my watercolors to fill in the gaps. And so far, this has been such a great exercise. I have uh, really enjoyed not uh, judging my photographs based on this arbitrary standard of how close to it is to a photograph. But, you know, uh, so it was very freeing because I had no clue if I was doing right or wrong, good or bad, the whole painting. I was just going there, see, looking at this really terrible sketch and trying to get the most out of it. Um, a, a lot of fun and I think it helped me be more creative in some some ways um, however I think it did come with its own challenges for instance I had to use a lot of my imagination and guys our imaginations suck ever since I've started to paint I've realized how much I rely on assuming patterns you look at leaves you observe all the leaves are the same size you look at rocks you think they're all arranged a certain way and you notice that you see the world in these assumed patterns when you start to paint all my rocks look so similar the rocks in that place were at so were so many different shapes and sizes but when I tried to paint them I really could not think of shapes of rocks <laughs> and and you know just just you have to keep going and my rocks although they look good but i think uh you know they all look very similar i struggled a lot with, with coming up with different shapes for rocks and uh, so it just i think it's going to improve my observations next time i think next time i see rocks i might take a moment longer to observe their shape to observe how they're sitting there to see uh you know how the waves are crashing on these rocks and what does it really look like and I think these exercises will help me 
notice other things such as how the light is moving how the lake goes from light on the top to extremely dark when it clo comes closer to you all these things i think we need to observe them understand them and really help use painting as a tool to help you see the world go out and really look at it and then recreate it as per your yes your unique world view Hey there, it's Anish here. Welcome on behind the scenes to my studio. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making this painting and the video putting all these ideas together so much so that I went back outside now that it's warmer and made another painting outside. I'm excited to translate this using more of my imagination and memories uh, onto a bigger canvas. So stay tuned for that video. Uh, hopefully it will come out in the next week or so uh, if you do not want to miss that video hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time